Hey guys, this is Chris with Drop Dice. So it's been about two weeks now, and um, all I can really do is apologize. There's been some changes that kind of shuffled things around, so I haven't made a video in a little bit, but I wanted to get back into this Choice Matters series. I had received a lot of good feedback, both on Facebook and on YouTube, about this video and about the content matter. So I wanted to continue the discussion about why I think that your choices, both as a player and as a GM, really shape how your game should be played. So today's topic is about backgrounds and backstories, technically. So let's kind of jump right into it. Let's talk about the difference between a background and a backstory. A background, or excuse me, a backstory is a narrative to explain who you are, where you came from, and why you are the way that you are. A background is the mechanical sense of how to explain who you are, where you came from, and how you got there. However, in 5th edition, this is very laid out for you, but let me give you an example of a game that doesn't have backgrounds involved. We'll stick with Pathfinder, because that's another kind of more popular game out there. So in Pathfinder, I make a character called Regret. He is the seventh son out of 13 uh, children that is born to a mother who is professionally a prostitute. And uh, he has lived as an urchin because his mother is also addicted to drugs and doesn't really take care of the kids and eventually she kind of cleans her life up and has a few more kids but I wanted to make an adventure that was kind of the anti of what everybody usually runs which is the my character is a lone wolf he doesn't have a family well this character has a family they're just a real messed up family and the kids kind of protect each other but the mom is kind of distant because of what she's chosen to do with her life she's kind of jaded and ostracized the children by doing so and the children have done it in return to her well, the mom really tries for a while, and she gets jobs for all the children, but she keeps having these children over and over and over, so she doesn't know what to do with them. So she takes the character that I've made um, and his brother and sends them to a monastery to be taken care of. And at the monastery, they eventually become monks, and the mon a monastery, as part of the um, becoming an ascetic monk with them, you give up everything that you own, all your prop your your different properties and things like that but not only do you do that you also give up your name to show full dedication to the ideas of this temple well my character gives up his name and once you become a full monk you write a new name inside the book of brothers and inside there he writes the single word regret so that becomes the character's name so through backstory it's shaped everything about who this character is coming into the game all the way to his name and why he's he goes by the name that he does because he regrets so many things that he did wrong as a child and things like that because he grew up as kind of this criminal street urchin type character so mechanically how I make that background happen or I should say that's his backstory mechanically how I make that background happen is I pick out skills at level one that, that really show who, my, who I was before starting down this path and in Pathfinder I think at level one your skills if you want to do this mechanically should your skills should show who you were your background whereas your class features shows who you're becoming because you're not you're not like the super monk yet so maybe you don't have like acrobatics and all that stuff instead you have stealth um, pickpocket and things like that to really show that you were a street urchin beforehand well inside the back story I also wrote that the character was really close to one particular relative which was his sister his sister eventually goes into prostitution because that's the family business the mother eventually comes out of prostitution has three children with a man that she marries and lives in squalor for the most part and as a joke to uh, the GM and everybody there I named the last three Tom Dick and Harry um, which was kind of fun and in fact inside the backstory I wrote it as kind of a joke about how she's been with every Tom Dick and Harry so thought to name the children after them but the the fun part about that game was is the character comes in and I know that he at the start of the adventure he's a guy who regrets a lot of things he's a monk now and I made it to where he as a profession he learned how to craft rice wine and he was addicted to rice rice wine he would yeah, when they first met him he was a drunkard all the time and he would tell people oh I can pick locks and they'd be like okay sure because they didn't know anything about him and the way he picked locks was punching them until they were broken and slowly as the game progressed everybody found out that yeah he could pick locks that yes he could do all these roguely things because he was more than what he was he was shaped by his group he was given a chance to to stop spiraling out of control and become a person of value again so he, that's what he does but as he gets to this plateau of becoming someone who's valued in society and stops drinking 
the GM turns around and brings the family in and really shows that the sister has gone down the bad path, that originally she was just kind of working in the whorehouse as a server, now she's being brought into and kind of forced into being a prostitute. It tests the character. And this is why I think backgrounds are really backgrounds and backstories are really important inside a sto uh, story. Had I not taken the time to write that stuff, my GM would have been like, oh, he's a monk, and yay, he's a monk. He's got skills to break stuff. Woo! If you write these things in, it's kind of like providing a map, a roadmap for your GM about how you want to play the game and things that you want to see in the game. So what I'm basically getting at is with the story of regret, your backgrounds are super important, and there's two ways to do it. You do super light, which is usually how I do it for one shots, which is this is my class, this is my background that I've taken, and here's a little paragraph, maybe three, four sentences about who I am in the moment, and maybe a touch of my background. And then through role play, I'll improv and I'll add details. A great example of this was uh, when I played the uh, the witch hunter in Marquise's Halloween game with the headless horseman. I originally just came up with this idea that he's an old man, he's a, he's a witch hunter, and um, I completely threw Marquise for a loop by saying that he was hunting for this one witch that he's been tracking forever, and I kind of used it as my excuse to come into the game late, but it totally changed how the game went and the motif, and my character was something to pity by the end because it showed that through his dedication and through his soul mi single-minded purpose, like thinking, he had become something else, something to be pitied. And that was a lot of fun actually playing that. And so my biggest piece of advice for you and biggest thing that you should consider is how not only your background shapes the characters is as you discover more about the backgrounds of your other characters in play, how does that shape your character from that point forward? And the thing that I would encourage people is to limit the amount of background sharing that you do with the other party members because if I tell my if I tell the other players everything there is about my background when their character learns about it it may not have as much impact as if we're sitting behind the fireplace and then my character goes you know this reminds me um, the the town we just left it reminded me uh, I left a sister at home I wonder how she's doing and then the players go and then the other characters go well you said you left her at home where where do you come from regret and he goes well it's a small village just off the mountainside. It's uh, it's called Solace, and my sister is there. She, uh, I try to keep her out of the family business, but I'm afraid she's might have gotten herself involved. And of course, the players will pull more information from that character and say, "Hey, well, what you do?" And then I get to kind of undo this ball of yarn that is my backstory for them. Well, maybe one of the characters who's playing a barbarian who is like a whoremonger loves women suddenly realizes that you know these these women that he, from the cat house that he's been picking up have families that they have things that are personal to them that they're people even and maybe that just starts the evolution of how that barbarian becomes in the future because there's a slight rub against those two character types because of what they're interested in Whereas the barbarian goes out and collects all this adventuring money and things like that for prostitutes, maybe you regret the monk collects his so that he can uh, refine his his sacred art, which has been passed down to him, which is rice wine making. And anything that's extra, he turns around and gives to like orphanages and street urchins and things like that because he knew how hard it was to live on the streets. That is something that is would never exist had you not taken the time to listen and evolve your character to the other backstories. So keep in mind that a backstory is not just for you, but for those around you. With that said, that's all I have for this video. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and as always, I'll see you at the gaming table.